In this special interview, I'm joined with Dr. Axel Schumacher, the CEO and co-founder of the Project Shivom. Welcome to the show, Axel. Hey, thank you for having me. Uh, that's Axel, when did you first learn about blockchain technology? Ah, uh, well, good question. Um, I got into blockchain around three years ago. So um, I have to go uh, jump a little bit back in time here, and um, <clears throat> because I, first I'm a scientist, I'm a geneticist, and for a long time I worked at uh, university. So I had my own research group and worked on the gen- genomics of complex diseases like cancer or schizophrenia and Alzheimer's disease. And a few years back, I uh, moved then into the business world. And I was building um, what what we called precision medicine or genomic platforms for the pharmaceutical industry, right? Okay. And so at that time, we ran into a lot of problems um, or more detailed, the pharmaceutical companies ran into problems because they had difficulties accessing patient data on genomic data on a large scale in good quality and they had no real good platform to share their data right because it's not very trivial you have to be really careful what to do with uh, people's most valuable data and this is healthcare data so you uh, you want to keep the privacy of people and you don't want um that some cyber criminals just enter your database and download everything. What we heard enough from in recent times, that happens to a lot of companies. So I got interested into blockchain technology because uh, this technology could potentially solve a lot of those bottlenecks, right? So I I started just uh, looking into the details, how it works, and uh, how it can solve specific questions in the healthcare ecosystem. And so uh, after a year or so, I I started then to uh, realize how this is probably really a game changer. And I started to write a book about it. Uh, It's called the Blockchain and Healthcare Strategy Guide. And it was a huge success, right? It's, um, when did this book be published? It was uh, mid, mid, mid of last year, probably. Okay. And um, I, I was amazed because um, I thought, okay, this is some uh, something for geeks, yeah, who, who know all about blockchain. And it's. Uh, I was really surprised to see that I, within the first week, uh, the book was downloaded ten thousand times. Right. Nice. So I was really surprised. And I got contacted by governments, by pharmaceutical companies, patient support groups, and all kinds of individual scientists that wanted to learn more about it. And basically, in this, at that time, I also met some of my co-founders. And the idea grew that it would be really worthwhile building a company around this idea, combining blockchain technology with uh, other state-of-the-art technologies, specifically genomics, artificial intelligence, and cryptography, to build really something completely new that can revolutionize healthcare. And so yeah, here we are. We uh, Last year, we founded uh, Shivom. And yeah. And so, excellent. Well, I mean, that was a great story of how we got to Shivom. Um, but what is Shivom? Uh, Shivom is um, a healthcare ecosystem. And at its core, this is the, basically the first part that we are developing is a genomics database or a genomics data hub. Let's call it this way. We want to collect genomic data from all over the world, from as many people as possible, so that everyone who comes to our platform can manage their own health using uh, the information stored in in their DNA. So everyone who comes to the platform basically will in the future um, have a variety of services available to them. 
like getting um, information about their well-being so how to stay healthy longer um, reports like pharmacogenetic reports these are reports that tell you what drugs you can use and which one you should avoid right, right. because this is very important because we are all very very different uh, um, I always say look uh, Yes, we are all humans. We all have two ears, one nose. But this is basically it with how we are identical. When it comes to environment or how we react to drugs, uh, lifestyle, and our diet, we react very different from one to each other. So some drugs that work only in a, in a small percentage of people. And let's say you want to go to a doctor you want to have at the very first day, if you are getting a diagnosis of a disease, you would at the very first day you want to have the right drug that works, right? You don't want that the doctor is trying two, three, four, or ten drugs before they, by coincidence, hit the right one. And um, this information that can help to go to this point is in our DNA stored. So th th there are right. a lot of possibilities how you can use really your uh, genome information to make sure that you stay healthy longer or that you can even prevent certain diseases. And uh, we hope that this will be possible on the platform. Uh, in part, we will develop our own services. And uh, overall, on, on, on top of the whole uh, genomic database and, and, and blockchain architecture, we will build a huge, massive marketplace. That means that other companies, so third-party providers from the healthcare space, can come and offer their own services. So in the end, we will, uh, in the future, end up with potentially thousands of services that will be available on the platform. So starting out, it's sort of, I mean, in a way, it does seem like 23andMe or that sort of company where you're you're c capturing genetic information from, from people who opt into it and then, uh, you know, using that information to both help studies, to uh, figure out the, ge the genome better and to better, you know, obviously diagnose which drugs work as your example. That's right. Um, so, you're, but you're looking to take that that sort of approach uh, even further with the marketplace. It sounds and and beyond just the twenty three and Me like reports, so to speak. Yes, that's right. Uh, we we take it much further right. uh, on on several levels. First of all, there in the business model of um, companies like twenty three and Me, and there are a lot of other similar companies out there. There's some f severe flaws. One is that, this is it's my opinion or our opinion of, of Shivom, that the data is not secure enough. Because all of those companies, what they do is they store the data in one centralized database. And, well, so far, maybe they were lucky, but healthcare data, this is very valuable. Right. right? Even in the darknet. And hackers, so cyber criminals are very interested in that data. And they will increasingly try to target those databases. And a lot of companies, a lot of large companies, they were already victims of those hacking attacks. And you just have to go uh, Google it. There are many, many uh, data breaches where millions of private uh, files of people uh, were stolen. Yeah, we've talked and, about that on Neocache Radio quite a few times. Right. You know, there's, right. there's even the, the biggest the biggest corporations in the world are hacked. Uh, it seems routinely. In, in it almost. happens all the time. Yes. Right. And so this is not a good approach. That's the reason why we want to use blockchain to decentralize the whole uh, process, so that to make it at least more difficult for cyber criminals to hack into a, one database. So we don't have a single entry point for hackers to just download a whole bunch of data. But this is not all. Um, like other genetic companies, what they usually do is they will, without the consent of the uh, data donor, right, the, the one that basically provides the genetic data, sell the access to the data 
to other third-party companies like pharmaceutical companies and they earn a lot of money by doing this and this is obviously not really fair because if you want let's say you want to share your data with the pharmaceutical companies they should pay you because it's your data right, right. and uh, this is what we want to provide at um, the Shivom platform so that people really have the power to decide first of all what um, should happen with their data and if they decide to share their data they don't have to but if they decide to share it they should get um, the largest amount of the money that companies pay for this data this is I think just fair right right so and, before yeah. you know there's there's this is you know obviously a very ambitious sort of project and taking healthcare and putting on a blockchain effectively and then the you know factoring the genome and genetics and uh, genomics uh, as well that's it's just additional layers of, of challenge and uh, and whatnot is there a, like a headquarters that or country that this business is operating out of already yes I mean we are still at very early stages and we are a little bit like a blockchain so mostly decentralized but the the headquarter is in uh, Munich this is in Germany where I'm sitting now okay and but we have uh, now several branches around the planet so we have a strong presence in India in uh, London in UK and also in the US and uh, Canada uh, and also we are planning we are in talks with uh, different other uh, regions in the world so we will probably have also very strong um, foot in Dubai so the Middle East and long term in a lot of other countries so because we want to have this um, Shibom platform really on a, on a global scale. It's a global enterprise. Excellent. All right. So there's basically, I mean, I want to, I want to get to the token and, uh, you know, that sort of stuff too, but I kind of want to cover right now the, you know, the, the exact starting out, you know, Shibom is going to be doing uh, gene sequencing. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That's right. And so, so could you get, start, sort of step through how that would be handled and how it would end up on the blockchain? Yes. So the first steps, they are not so much different than what, what other genetic companies doing. So people can have two choices. Either they were already sequenced with one of those aforementioned companies, then they can use this data and upload it to our platform. The other way is that they can um, acquire a sequencing uh, kit with us. So we would send them um, a small box and with a tube and they would just basically either spit in it, so it's basically they will collect a saliva sample, or we use um, so swipes where you can just yourself swipe on your, on your, uh, in your mouth a little bit of the tissue and you would send that back to us. We would get that sequenced. For that we have uh, uh, either we would do this with third-party providers uh, in the beginning more, but we are also building our own labs around the planet, so where we would do the sequencing on our own. Uh, because this is also a process that has to be, of course, very secure. We don't want to have any data leakage at any point of the process. So we want to be in control of every step. The data itself would then be uh, stored in an encrypted form on different servers. Uh, at the same time, the data is um, chunked. So there's not one genome like a, like a text of a book uh, uploaded to some place, right? Sure, it's it, broken it's, into pieces. It's, it's broken into pieces. So the, the reason is simply that uh, it, it makes it much more difficult to, um, let's say, if, if someone would somehow get hold of a piece to make any use of it right because it's just a small piece of some data pretty meaningless so the data itself is then hashed on the blockchain so there will be then pointers so, so that we obviously we have to find the data again and um, but before the data enters um, onto the blockchain 
we have what we call a privacy layer. So there we use uh, state-of-the-art cryptography and that allows basically for a user to stay pretty much anonymous, right? The, the key here is that once data is on our Shivon platform, there is no way that anyone could trace the data back to the data owner. And this is very, very important. And um, so we really we work together with uh, cryptographers, the really world-renowned uh, cryptographers that are really that really know what they are doing. Um, we also work together with with a company called Sferity, the uh, city also in Germany and Berlin, uh, that help us building this uh, additional privacy layer. Uh, the key is really that we want to be as secure as possible. Um, although we obviously, if people are involved, you probably will never really reach 100% security. You know? So everyone in the process, of course, should be careful. But we, we really aim at building the most secure system on the planet for this. And um, thinking long term, I mean, a lot of people are always asking us, uh, Look, there will be soon some quantum computers, and they will be able to basically crack every encryption there is. Uh, we are also working on uh, processes to um, make the platform really post-quantum secure, right? Okay. Um, but, but this is, of course, a step-by-step -step procedure. So we will add in time a new security layers to make it more and more secure. So let's, I mean, you mentioned a bunch of security and, and uh, you know, of course, encrypting the information and then piecing that information into the, the blockchain or, or, or dividing it up so that if someone finds some pieces or, or gains access, they won't have all the pieces. And all that, it sounds like really good uh, data security measures to ensure the the privacy is is still there right. and and then the the idea that you're not going to have a, a clear link from the data do, uh, the data requester and their their files um now it's like the the, the platform itself is this something where users are going to be able to interact with it and they're going to be able to select what sort of uh uses their data they want to they want to offer and and then opt out of things is that how it works well um we want, of course, to have um, as much flexibility as possible, right? The, uh, again, it's all up to the user. We want to make a, a platform where the user decides what happens to the data. So that uh, what we're doing is we use smart contracts where everyone uh, can exactly very fine-grained manner decide with whom you want to share your uh, genomic data or other healthcare data or not. And um, uh, also at what level? This could be, for example, you could say, um, yes, I, I want to share it with uh, my physician, right? Because she may can help me uh, finding a treatment for a disease. But I don't want to share my data with my health insurance because why should they know that I may be predisposed to Alzheimer's or diabetes? So we don't want that. And this, we, we make it as easy, easy as possible so that the user can really make uh, uh, very easy decisions about this process. And as you mentioned already the opt out. So now what, what we want to do is basically uh, we want to have an opt-in. So the default state, uh, if, if you have your genome sequence stored with us, this would be that it, it will not be shared with anyone, right? Okay. So for example, let's, let's say a pharmaceutical company would be interested in your data. Then we would probably uh, uh, send you a message saying, look, um, there's a chance that your, your data is uh, will be part, let's say, of a clinical trial. Uh, do you want to share the data? And you get this amount of tokens for doing this. This is this is one option. 
The other option is, of course, that people could say, look, I'm, I'm very much interested in, in research. So I, I give you broad consent. So if you, if you want to share my data, please share it. But I want to be paid for it. Yeah. This is, so there will be lots of uh, different ways to handle this. But, right. what's, but what was most important is that it's all up to the user. So we, as the, the, the owner of the platform, we cannot decide this. So we have no way of, of sharing the data because we don't own the key to the data. So even if right, so even it's, if it's want based to, on the private key pair, the yes, public private yes, key yes, pair of, exactly, of blockchain. Exactly. Okay. And one one thing is another important part is there. Even if data is shared, it the access, for example, to the genomic data, is not that um, a company gets complete access to it. So there will not be the possibility that a pharmaceutical company can download your genomic data. Well, this would go too far because once they would be able to do this, they, of course, could share the data then with other parties. Right. So right. Um, what they get is just access for algorithms to uh, make analysis on the data. But there's, there will not be a read, readable sequence that they can see. Right, it sort of protects you. I mean, from basically, one as you said, once someone has a copy, then it's just Control C and then paste it in email, and now everybody <laughs> yes, can have a copy. That's right. Uh, although it, so again, it's, it's it's still anonymous. Uh, so uh, <laughs> even if people could read some of of the data, there's still, as I mentioned before, there's there's no way to trace it back to a certain individual. Right. Now, I, I assume that you built into this platform, you have uh, layers of security for the user themselves. Like they, there's a password access, uh, you know, that sort of stuff. But do you, are you looking at, uh, you know, stricter security measures, two-factor authentication, those sorts of things? Yes, absolutely. Um, as I mentioned, this is a, a evolving platform. I mean, we, we obviously start with a very... Uh, uh, primitive would be the wrong word, <laughs> but a very basic platform. And then we uh, step by step add more security layers. And security is, of course, also not all. It must be usable as well, right? Um, right. Let's say uh, what certainly happens a lot is what can happen. You, you lose your password. What do you do? Right? Is then everything lost? <laughs> like what happens a lot with nowadays with cryptocurrencies. If you lose your key, bad luck. So right. um, we want to make sure that um, people can really use the platform. So that there should be also layers for recovery of the password. Um, at the same time, this, this shouldn't be a platform just for some computer geeks. Really, everyone with access to a computer or to a mobile device should be able to uh, use the platform. This is important because we are also going into areas of the world where people are not um, so experienced with these things. We have, for example, a, a pilot project in a rural area in India. This was recently, we had, a, uh, we had it in the press. We partnered with the Indian state of Andhra Pradesh to start a uh, pilot to sequence parts of the population in that state. And of course, a lot of those people, they they don't have access to modern medicine or to precision medicine. And they don't know what a blockchain is. Yeah. So right. we have to build a platform that is really very easy to use, but at the same time, secure. And let's talk about the token. Mm -hmm. What What is the token called? The token is called Omics. Token. Omics. Okay. And yes. what is the uh, the token symbol? O M or the uh, the letter O M yeah. O M X. O M X. Yes. Okay. And you uh, are you going to have a token sale soon? Oh, very soon. It is in uh, two days on, on on the 16th. So depending when you will air this. That's probably that's that Monday. Uh, that's probably the day I'll, I'll release this. Yes. That's 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 yeah, where the, our pre-sale starts at the 16th of April. So this the token sale. Is there a specific blockchain you're issuing these tokens on? Is it Ethereum, uh, for example? Very good question. Um, what we are 
really aiming at is to be blockchain agnostic. So for the people that don't know what that means is we interact or we plan to interact with a variety of blockchains. The reason is very simple. Uh, we are at a time a point of technological development where uh, quickly these, all these technologies develop at, at an enormous pace. And what is state of the art now may be completely outdated in one or two years. Yeah. Sure. And so we will keep the option open to really um, modify our database and, and the platform to make it really all the state of the art. It's the same with the security layers. If, if some new uh, cryptographic uh, algorithms are developed, we may implement them. The same with the blockchain. So we will uh, start out. We, we have a collaboration with the guys from the Big Chain DB and Ocean Protocol. Uh, Ocean Protocol is uh, important because uh, we want to really handle big data. So gen genomic data itself is already, we are talking about really huge data files in the, in the hundreds of gigabytes. And uh, we want to have the possibility to crunch this data by AI algorithms, some deep learning algorithms. So we are um, so partnering with them to to help us basically uh, really build something useful that that data will be actionable. We will have also other partners which we will still announce from the AI space to provide really very sophisticated um, algorithms to make the data really actionable. To help. So otherwise it would be just like a library where you put data and there it is. But you want to make something with this data. And, uh, and and then we will we will add on it. So we will also uh, another blockchain. We also want to have uh, the possibility to work with uh, Hyperledger. And these are basically um, the ones we are starting with. But but long term, um, we want really to integrate a lot of others. This is also important because everything in our platform is about collaborations, partnerships. We want to have a lot of other companies also from the blockchain space that interact with us. We have already two, three partners from the healthcare and blockchain space, and we, which will be announced also in the coming days. And of course, they have also their own blockchains, right? So uh, we have to find a way to interact. And that, that means we have to be blockchain agnostic. Getting back to this token sale, just to sort of capture some of the, the finer details, uh, how much are you looking to raise for your for your token we sale? We want to raise 75k on Ether. And then, what sort of exchange rate are, are you offering, at least initially, uh, for the tokens? Well, the, the official uh, exchange rate will be uh, for one Ether, you will get 7,000 Omics tokens, and in total, we will issue three billion tokens. Are you going to sell three billion tokens, or are you going to issue, or are you going to sell uh, less than the total uh, amount? We will sell less than the total amount. Uh, if if you're interested, so we will have all the information, of course, on our web page, where we exactly uh, explain the percentage what will be issued. So if people are really uh, interested in the details, they should come to our website on shivom.io. Uh, or ask, of course, in our social media channels. And we really try hard to answer every question in there. Right. So that's shivom.io. It's S-H-I-V-O-M.io. It's is it you are doing a private sale first and then uh, a public sale later? I mean, how does how's your schedule? Look well, like? we had we had already a round of uh, private sale and uh, we reached already our soft cap, so uh, there is really a large demand to be part of that project. Uh, I think the reason is a very simple one: everyone understands healthcare, or at least uh, the need for revolutionizing healthcare because everyone wants to stay healthy obviously or and most people have some uh, family history of disease everyone knows someone who has a, a severe disease so there's obviously um, really a use case 
to be on this platform and to so support the platform and to build really a, a large ecosystem around it. Most people understand that uh, business model very well. And it's a huge market, right? This is a, a multi-trillion dollar market. Thank you so much for joining me, Axel. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you.